We made it to Oceanside. We are going to build our bikes, get on a bike ride, and hopefully, if we have time, go to the Ironman Village and check in. So we're gonna run there, run back, which should be a total of 1.6 miles. So we got a busy day. We just got here at 2 p.m. And uh, Thursday, two days out from the race, I think we're ready. I think we just gotta just get our bikes built up and see if everything's working. Gotta take the elevator down four floors. Oh! <laughs> Ow. got back from the bike. The bike is working fine. Now Rachel and I are going to run to the Ironman Village and pick up our packet and run back and hopefully we'll see some people out there. So it turned out Oceanside is windier and rainier than when I was here two years ago. We were going to swim open water with a wetsuit, but the, the conditions were too much, so we just kind of dipped in in our swimsuit. And now we're at our condo's pool, so we're gonna get in the hot tub, warm up for, for a bit, and do some swimming here one day out from the race. And just getting everything activated for the swim, the bike, the run. We might not even bike. Uh, because of the slippery surface but who knows and I do have a photo shoot at 10:50 a.m. and a pro meeting at 1 p.m. transition to drop off our bike. So this is a day after 70.3 Oceanside and I'm just gonna give a little rundown, a recap about how my race went and see where I can improve from there. Started out before the swim, it was pretty windy and cold. I was layered up and just getting in before the water, taking my socks off, 
Still kind of shivering, but I got warmed up. I did a good warm up for the swim. For the swim start, I was on the right hand side, right behind Mark Dubrick. And the goal was to stay behind his feet because I knew he was gonna be in the front pack. So the gun went off for the swim start and I tried the best I could to stay on his feet. And then there were just so many people in there. But I'm starting to get this idea of what to do for a mass swim start. I think there were 71 pro men that started. So it got a little bit hectic. I got in a group, I, you know, chilled for a bit. And I thought we were just taking pretty far, far lines through, through the course. I think I was 14th or 15th in the, the swim. A minute back from the leader. I felt pretty good, didn't push it too hard on the swim. Got out to the run and again, I was a bit cold. My feet were getting numb by just running as fast as I could to get to my bike. Got to my bike, I put off my socks, took a sip of my water at transition. I swallowed a bunch of water in that swim though. So my mouth was salty and I uh, just wanted to rinse that out for a bit. The first 15, 20 minutes, I still felt pretty cold. We were in the city going through some shaded areas and going pretty fast. There's a lot of potholes, bumps. I took my corners and went through all those bumps pretty pretty carefully. Lionel Sanders passed me pretty quickly. Sam Long passed me pretty quickly. A couple groups and I try to stay on with the group but I know in the past I tried to do that and uh, I suffered in the run. They were going out pretty fast and um, just wanted to stay in my own race and get my heart rate down a bit and just race my race on the bike so I can have a solid run. About mile 37, Taylor Nib came passing with a group of four, including me, of us working together on the bike. She passed us and uh, that's when I knew, well, wow, if Taylor Nib passed me on this bike and we're, we were pushing decent power, I, I told myself, wow, this she's having a a big race. I don't think anyone, any female is even close to her at this point. I remember in 2022 when I raced this race, Taylor Nib passed me I think around 40 mile 45 on the bike. So us four try to keep up with her for a couple miles. Average heart rate was 164 for the bike with a max heart rate of 187. Average power 260 with a normalized power of 271. So not the best power output I've had in the 70.3 race but some surges, some steady effort working with the group. And overall, it was a pretty windy day. Got to transition, put on my run shoes, got my hat, and then headed off for the 13.1 mile half marathon run. The first two miles, I felt pretty good, so I pushed the pace a bit. I went five minutes, 29 seconds for the first mile, five minutes, 36 for the second mile. And then right after mile two, my quads cramped again. It was mainly my right quad, the teardrop muscle. So the next aid station, I grabbed out two packets of sodium. I had 1,000 milligrams of sodium, mixed it in a cup, stirred it, drank it, poured some Gatorade in it, stirred it again, made sure I drank the whole two packets of sodium. I probably stopped for three times and uh, tried to stretch my, my quad muscle. And after that, I had no problem cramping up. I did take around 4,000 milligrams of sodium on the bike and it wasn't a hot day. So I may have need, just need a tad more bit of sodium, almost to the point where I, I'm not cramping on the run. I think I've, I've cramped a lot of my races so far. And this is also the time when Josh Monda, my training partner in the Pacific Northwest, passed me. So I was seeing him for quite a bit on the second half of the run. And also Evan Price was right behind me. I think at one point we were just 10, 15 meters apart. So I was just trying to not let him catch me, just improve on my run performance. At some point, I did stop two to three times just for my left calf. I was getting a little strain, a uh, little tightness down there. So I had to stretch a little, stop, tap it, hit it, hit my calf muscle and just kept going. But it didn't bother me the rest of the run. All I focused on was having a good arm movement and also keeping my stride quick. And I did actually finish strong in front of Evan and right behind Taylor Nim as she was finishing. Kind of stepped off the gas pedal a bit um, when Taylor finished because she held up the banner, wanted her to celebrate her race and I moved to the side, did a little clap 
on my own and uh, I finished in a uh, 119 half marathon so that's a six minute three second uh, pace for 13.1 miles and this is my fastest half marathon and half and fastest half marathon in a half Ironman so pretty proud with that my goal was 118 so I was not pretty far off if I had that muscle cramp figured out I think I would have gotten 118 but this is a huge step for my run portion of my triathlon so getting to know my limit and seeing how how fast I can run starting out the run and seeing what pace I can hold for 13.1 miles. Overall a fantastic day. I'm super proud of myself and time to relax and uh, start heading my way back home. As soon as I finished my race, I wanted to find Rachel and her parents. It took me about 45 minutes to find her parents. Rachel was on her second lap and when she was going to the Oceanside Pier, I was going to cheer her on and I also saw her parents in front of me. So I had no idea they were there the whole time. She ran by, I patted her on the back, met up with her parents and we started tracking her together. She finished in a time of 5 hours and 41 minutes. I was super proud of her, super pumped to see her at the finish line. Unfortunately, she got DQ'd and she did a great job explaining about her mistakes in the Instagram post. And I'm so proud of her because it takes a lot to owning up to your mistake. A valuable race lesson about the penalty and disqualification process. The goal for her was to get the experience of the 70.3 distance because she is targeting the 70.3 Oregon this summer. Can't wait to keep following her journey. You guys should follow her on Instagram to see more. And after the race, we got together, we met up, took some pictures and videos for the memories. We are about two hours after the race. I'm gonna pick up my stuff from transition and this is Danny. Hola! He's gonna pick up Rachel's stuff. I feel good. Still walking. And uh, I'm also gonna sign my hat, my medal, and my bib number to give to a, a volunteer and hopefully a kid volunteer. As I reflect more on this trip and this race, I just want to say thank you so much for supporting me and for those of you that have been following my journey for a while now. I really do appreciate it. This sport is not easy as a professional triathlete. I am beyond grateful for all the support when it comes to taking videos and pictures of me on course. And big thanks to Rachel's parent who came out to support us. Danny also got a, a strange sunburn on his head. I had a great time at Oceanside. In 20 days, I conquer Ironman, Texas on April 27th. So time to rest up, get back to a little bit of training, and race again very soon. Peace out.